Let's thank our sponsors for bringing this show possible to you tonight. Our sponsors include our title sponsors, CF Professionals Incorporated, Gary Gruce's office, the Ohio Mutual Insurance Group, Jim Kennedy's office, Marco's Pizza, the Pioneer Mill of Restaurant of Tiffin, Ralph's Joy of Living in Tiffin and in Fremont, Seneca Hills Golf Course, State Farm Insurance at Lape's office, Steyer Seeds, Tiffin Ace Hardware, and Viewpoint Graphics. My name is Russ Snyder, voice of the Tiffin University Dragons, alongside head football coach Gary Goff. Coach, how are you doing today, sir? Doing good. How are you? I'm not doing too bad. So three weeks into the season now, uh, learned something about your kids? <laughs> yeah, we have. Um, you know, I guess the you know, good news is Grand Valley and Michigan Tech are off our schedule. I was going to say, my goodness, <laughs> the schedule makers did not do you guys any favors when it comes to the conference play no, this year, did no, they? No, not at all. But, um, yeah, you know, what a great environment we just played in Saturday. I mean, it was mm-hmm. a really nice venue. Uh, obviously, Grand Valley is um, a great football team and highly ranked for a reason. Yeah. And uh, everything they do up there is uh, first class. So um, it, it was a good atmosphere for our kids to see. Yeah, well, they got up on us early, but I tell you what, your kids didn't uh, never said die. You guys came out in the second half, and you gave them everything they wanted in the second half, and actually yeah. outscored them. Yeah, we, you know, we didn't start the game like we wanted to. I think we were a little uh, big eyed and, and and shell shocked. Sure. Maybe I, th- I think they had what a little over eleven thousand attendance. Yeah, I think yeah. What, I, what I heard about five thousand uh, just in students. Oh, really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was uh, the uh, military day, and mm-hmm. they had the camo everywhere and the fireworks everywhere. So I, I think the kids um, – they're a little shell shocked to start the game, yeah. And uh, with all that talent, Grand Valley's got. I tell you what, their offense is very explosive, and they showed that right off the bat. Well, you talked about their uh, receiver in our pregame interview, averaging around twenty-seven or so, 37, yard, 37 yards a catch, and uh, he he just kept on going. Only about five ten, maybe one hundred eighty pounds, but guy quick as lightning. Yeah, he can run. He can mm-hmm. he can fly. And um, you saw there, I think the. Um, that first drive, we were in quarters coverage, which means our, our DBs were deep, and they're told not to let anything mm-hmm. deeper than them. Well, this young man ate up all that cushion. The quarterback just threw it as far as he could, and he made a great play on the football. Yeah, that was uh, Isaiah Grimes, our quarterback. He's their, actually their second-team quarterback out their depth chart to begin with, but you compared him to Ben Roethlisberger with his size. He's about 6'6", six, six, about 240-point quarterback out there. Uh, you know, I think uh, we made the comment when we were doing the uh, pregame show that we saw him warming up, and he's a big person. He's a big guy, <laughs> real big fella. And he can throw the ball a mile yeah. without a doubt and uh you know i know uh, matt mitchell there grand valley's head coach he was he was uh, complaining a little bit that his starter was out for the second year in a row and uh i, I asked him i said well you know is that a bad thing your backup is is six six two fifty yeah throw it a mile he goes yeah. yeah but you know he might not be quite the same leadership as the other guy <laughs> he didn't do too bad of a job out there no but. he's a good player for what they do well that receiver he spoke about brandon green he only had three catches went for 114 yards but each of his catches were big ones their tight end is who scored their uh, first score the jamie potts the tight end a 32 yard pass from quarterback isaiah grimes after a five play 75 yard uh, drive at taking early 7-0 lead yeah he, he ran a wheel route out of the backfield um i, I thought our, our uh, corner uh was uh, carlton Watkins was in good position to make a play and uh you know they both went up and um you know i, I, th- I thought they got away with a little bit of a push off yeah right there. possibly <laughs> but uh, uh, that's the way the ball rolls, and uh, he made a great catch right there in the uh, front corner of the end zone. Yeah, Michael Rattay, their running back. Uh, they have usually have a three-headed monster at running back. They're, one of them didn't play. Rattay and Spencer got the majority of the carries. Rattay ended up with 174 yards on the ground. He had their second score, a one-yard touchdown run, with a minute 42 left to go in the first quarter to take a 14-0 lead. Yeah, you know, and that was right after we had driven uh, all the way down. Uh, we got to the orange zone, and... Um, you know the student body and we had to go to the silent count Mm -hmm. you saw our offensive lineman false start right there and uh, after that we went to the silent count and um kind of got you know backed up right there and uh you know went for a field goal and and uh had it blocked and uh you know our operation time was just a little too slow right there Mm -hmm. and they got penetration uh, up the middle right there and, and got the big block but you know, offensively, we moved the ball a little bit early. We just couldn't finish drives right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we like to finish every drive with a, a, a kick, and meaning a field goal kick or a, or a PAT kick. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I thought we did a good job right there offensively moving the ball, but we just, again, didn't finish drives. And then right before half, you know, we put another drive together and, and uh, actually, you know, hit uh, Jeremy Armstrong, who will be on the show a little bit later. Uh, in the corner of the end zone, Antonio Pipkin made a real nice throw right there. Yeah, well, at the end of one quarter, you're down 14-0. Uh, to What did you say to your kids? Uh, you know, just get them just, you know, let's relax. Let's play some football. Let's yeah. not worry about everything else that's going on. You know, we, we were big-eyed right there. Um, saw a couple of our players um, on the defense side of the ball. Uh, uh, the routine plays, I've seen them make a million times at practice. They didn't just because they hesitated or, or, mm-hmm. or you know, they just – you know, we're back on their heels a little bit. And, you know, I just told them, you know, hey, exactly right. Go out, have fun, relax, just play football. Yeah. And, you know, they were very excited and pumped before the game because, I mean, what a great atmosphere to play. Yeah, a you can't get excited game. to play football there. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be playing college right. football. 
Um, you know, but it's kind of like, you know, they came out swinging and we weren't quite ready to defend and swing back, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, so in that first quarter, I thought we, we settled down a little bit. Um, you know, we, we still gave up some big plays. We had a, a big key interception yeah. that we gave up that, um, you know, quarterback just uh, missed the read, checked to a wrong play right there. And then uh, kind of same thing on defense. We gave up another play action route where Stephon Willis was right in, in perfect position. And their their green kid just makes a great play on the ball, and we got two guys hanging all over him. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, Again, just plays that we've made a million times, but right there on that stage, you know, we just kind of panicked a little bit and then froze. And you can't freeze playing against a superior team like that. Well, they did. They got up big on you in the first half. But as you said, Jeremy Armstrong, a six-yard touchdown pass from Antonio Pipkin. When you made the change at uh, quarterback position, or I believe it was in the second quarter when you made the change, yeah. was it to get that athlete out there to get uh – you know, a little bit more of a, a weapon on the offensive side? Well, it was just looking for something to spark us. Sure. And not, not only the offense, but the, the entire team. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Antonio's got a lot of athletic ability. Um, he showed that in this game, in the second yeah. half especially. Um, you know, the future's bright for the young man. Absolutely. Uh, without a doubt. But, uh, you know, we kind of got to slow some things down for him and uh, not throw him the entire offensive playbook. And that was kind of our plan going into the season. You know, let his package evolve a little bit, you know, um, you know, play by play and, and game by game. And I tell you what, the young man went out there and battled and uh, is is probably capable of taking on a lot more than us coaches ever imagined. Yeah, well, I talked to – I had a chance to talk to the radio guys from uh, Grand Valley before the game started. I actually went on their pregame show and gave a preview of our squad. And one thing that they mentioned about us was, my gosh, you guys have so much more size on the defensive <laughs> front than what we ha- had there before. And I told him, I said – you know, we're not where we want to be, but we're a much better team than we were two years ago when we went up there. And I think a lot of people believe that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, a gentleman, uh, I don't know what he does. I don't know if he's a coach for him or if he's just part of their uh, administration. But he came and grabbed me after the game, and I, I got kind of a startled because I didn't know yeah. who he was. He uh-huh. said, Coach, I just wanted to come tell you that I've never seen a Tiffin team fight like that. And, you know, it kind of makes you feel good. But you know what, um, uh, like I've said a million times, it feels like we're tired of – crawling sure i'm ready to start running Mm -hmm. and um and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the show but we know we're on the right path and um you know when we we get to it i'll tell you about after the game what what the kids talked about so at the uh half as we said we got the uh, touchdown pass jeremy armstrong and then uh the uh, extra points, you know, you don't have any – without bad luck, we don't have any luck at all, and the extra point <laughs> hits you upright. And we could have had seven, we still end up with six, though. Yeah, um, you know, he, he just pushed it, you know, wide right, hit the upright, and bounced back. Um, and then that's why we went with Seth P- Pico for the remainder mm-hmm. of the game. Seth hit a big field goal and, and took care of his extra points. So, uh, you know, we're going to have some competition right there. You know, uh, Thomas Law's got the big leg, and he can kick out of the end zone for uh, kickoffs, but we need him to be a little more consistent on on field goals and PATs. Sure, yeah. When you have an opportunity to get three, got to get that three. Exactly right. So he went in the locker room uh, down 35-6. to What did you tell the kids? Well, you know, I told them, look, I, I'd be proud of them if they went out the second half and played football like they're very capable of doing and, and relax. It's just a football game. Um, you know, Grand Valley gets dressed just like we do, you know, uh, and, and I want to see him compete. I told him that from, from that moment on, you know, we're going to go with the guys who compete and give us every bit they mm-hmm. got. You know, we might not always win some of those one-on-one battles, but I want to see guys play with heart and, and play to the, the whistle. And, um, you know, I, I think we went out and did that in the second half. So, um, you know, very proud of him for doing that. Uh, I think, uh, you know, my regret and the team's regret is they wish – We'd have started a lot, started the sure. game that way, absolutely. You know? And um, you know, because I tell you what, at the end of the ball game, Grand Valley was trying to get the game over with and get out of there. Oh, you could tell. And um, we'd have played for two more quarters if we could have. Sure, you know? absolutely. Well, that was the uh, the way the first half went around, and the second half was a totally different story. Dragons just fell down t- uh, behind a little too big there in the opening half to make it a, j- a valiant comeback for the victory. But we'll come back after this break and tell you all about half number two and get you ready for Northwood next weekend, another road test in the GLIAC Conference. You are listening to the Gary Golf Show on the Tiffany University.
all about the first half of our game up at Grand Valley State. And uh, second half, totally different story. You, did you feel your kids came out that second half ready to give it all they had? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, um, you know, on paper, we won the second half. Absolutely. And, and we just dug ourselves too big of a hole there in the first half. But, um, you know, we ended the game with a big difference in time of possession, more plays. Um, you know, you, you name it there in the second half. You just – you can't give up that many points in the first half. Absolutely. Well, Seth Pico, as you said, you made a change uh, in the kicking game, and Seth came out and hit a 34-yard field goal. The thing I really liked about your scoring drives here, Coach, 11 plays, 13 plays, 9 plays. We haven't seen three consecutive scoring drives like that in quite a while. No, and um, you know we've, we found a little something right there. And, um, again, I think it was Antonio Pipkin sparked mm-hmm. us. And I tell you what the young man can do is um, he can get out of trouble and he makes things happen with his legs. Now, we had a couple third down and ten scrambles for first downs. We he, hadn't seen that. He converted third and 15, mm-hmm. you know. And um, the, the good thing about the offense right there is we had a few flags um, – I'm still looking for him on film, but anyway, part of the game. Yeah, yeah. We had a, a few a crucial flags right there that we overcame, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Pipkin got us, you know, those conversions on a third and 15, a third and 10, um, not to mention a, a fake punt right there. Yeah, absolutely. We get the first in and it gets called back for a holding. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, right there, that's another big drive because we were in the orange zone. Yeah. And instead, we get the holding call and now it's fourth and ten. We have to end up pooch kicking it. Yeah. But, you know, Pipkin sparked us right there and um, I, I saw a, a change in some of the, the skilled players on the offense. I, I think they really believed, wow, you know, no matter what happens up front or in the backfield, he can get out of, uh, out of the pocket and find me downfield. Sure. And that's one of the reasons I recruited the young man is because he is a quarterback first. He'll hurt you with his arm. Yeah. And he did that in this game as well. Um, so he's not always looking to run and get out of the pocket. You know, so um, once we kind of control – more and more of that, the kid can be very dangerous. Well, you had a second touchdown pass here in the third quarter as well. A pass to Jerry Brown, freshman who was on the show last week. Takes it 25 yards to the house from Antonio Pipkin, and that was a fantastic play. Jerry Brown did some great individual things on that, and all around, that was just a great play. Well, that that drive there, we also um, had a penalty right there and backed us up. And, um, you know, we, we ran a vertical play where we're sending everybody, you know, deep and just with some seam reads. And right there, Pipkin does a great job. He gets flushed out of the pocket. And I talked to him at halftime, look, son, don't always take off running. And if you're getting out of the pocket, keep your eyes downfield. Mm-hmm. And he did that on this play. He kept his eyes downfield. He found Jerry Brown right there on the sideline. And Jerry Brown made a nice, I think it was 24-yard run right there where he carried three defenders into the end zone. Mm-hmm. You could see Jerry's eyes light up when he got about to the eight-yard line. And uh, he was going to score his first college sure. touchdown. <laughs> Absolutely. Nobody was going to take that from him. Absolutely. Right there. And then Joe Collard with a two-point conversion reception. He had to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, um, that's, that's a, a muddle huddle we run right mm-hmm. there. And it's just pretty much a numbers game. Um, and uh, they didn't line up the right way. And, yeah, Tyler Jones, who ex-quarterback, yep. Tyler Jones uh, reads it right and finds Joe Collard right there for the two-point conversion to make it 17-35 right there. And uh, right there, our sideline was very excited, both offensively and defensively. Mm-hmm. And it was a ball game. Um, I think when we scored that, there was – yeah, almost the entire fourth quarter. There was a minute and nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. In the third quarter, okay, yeah. yeah. So we still had an entire quarter of football left mm-hmm. in, in the game right there. And um, I felt pretty confident at that point because we'd moved the ball for three straight series and gotten points. So, um, you know, I, I think Grand Valley started panicking right there a little. You know, like I said, three consecutive scoring drives that go 11 plays, 75 yards, 13 plays, 70 yards, and nine plays, 79 yards. Those are great confidence-boosting drives for your offense and things that you can really build on. Well, and it's not like we're going against, um, you know, some no. team that's, that's no. not, not very good. No, they're only uh, giving up 125 yards a game through the air. Right. You guys come in and you throw in that game for a total of 304 yards. So Right. Yeah, well, and I think the biggest thing uh, with what we did offensively was the running game. Mm-hmm. And uh, with Jerry Brown, had a good run, uh, a lot of nice runs, and so obviously so did Pipkin. But, um, you know, that's something that we've got to continue to build. Um, in this offense, if we can rush for over 100 yards, um, you know the passing game will take care of itself. Sure, you know. So, well, you talked about Pipkin, uh, you know, r- rolling out of the pocket and wanting him to continue to keep his eyes open as a quarterback, not not as a runner. Is that hard for an athlete like him to to not want him when you get that open field in front of you, and not just want to tuck and go? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, I think so. And, and uh, w- when you're recruiting some of these uh, uh, high school guys to play quarterback. You know, most high school puts their best athlete sure. at quarterback. Yeah. You know, and um, well, I Jerry example, Brown played a lot of quarterback in Jerry high school. Jerry Brown did. Uh, Jacob Snyder. Yeah. You know, one of our receivers. You know, when you watch his film, we knew this kid's an athlete. He he takes the ball and and, and runs, and he can throw a good football. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, he was taught in high school, hey, one read and run, or just run the quarterback power. Well, the thing I, I did like about Pipkin's high school film is that, you know, he threw for a lot of yards in high school, okay. and he's got a cannon. So, uh, lots of times we'll see uh, an athletic quarterback, and we'll say, yeah, we should recruit him, but he's going to play receiver or mm-hmm. safety. Sure. Uh, as to where Pipkin, we said, yeah, we're going to recruit him as a quarterback because he can run, and he's got a cannon for an arm. And I think uh, there in the fourth quarter, you saw him throw it about 70 yards in the air. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for, for a touchdown that we got Yeah, back. that ball, he, I think it went 65 yards in the air on that play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and well, you bring up Jacob Schneider. He seems to be some of your uh, since week one to where we are now. Somebody's really worked more into the offensive scheme. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he's a tough nosed kid. Um, he, he's good with the football in his hands. And uh, we knew going to this game, we were going to throw a lot of swing routes and a lot of bubbles. And uh, so we rep him and Tyler Jones out of the backfield right there. And I tell you what, they kind of keep each other uh, in check. Yeah. You know, because uh, they know if one drops the ball, the other one's getting the reps sure. or vice versa. Mm-hmm. So you know, competition makes everybody better. Absolutely. And, uh, Snyder had a really good game. He did. Yeah, and freshman Jalen Santoro, I think, had his first collegiate catch as well in the ball game. <laughs> Santoro did. We actually just got done, uh, you know, watching the film with the players, and uh, one of the kids said, "Oh my gosh, Jalen, you had to catch that because that ball was put through your chest." Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was right in front of us. I was on the uh, Grand Valley sideline. Yeah, so Jalen's got his first college catch for 21 yards. So he's averaging 21 yards a catch. So we need to keep that up. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad uh, average, that's for sure. Well, the Dragons at this point have outscored Grand Valley 11 to zero in the four, in the second half. In the fourth quarter, Michael Rattay, the running back, gets another two-yard run to complete the scoring at the 42-17. to But when you look at the game as in two different games, really, because we figured Matt and I talked at halftime, we're like, I imagine that Coach Goff is telling these kids, that game's over. Let's play a second. Let's play a two-quarter game right here and go out and win this part of the ball Without game. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I told him, hey, the score is 0-0. Guys, go out and give me your best effort. Yep. And, I, and I told him, I said, look, I – I, I don't want this best effort for me. Give the best effort for your brother sitting next to you and for your family. Mm-hmm. You know, you all deserve this. Go out and play hard and have fun. And, you know, I hope we learn something right there and we'll continue the rest of the season that way because if, if we'll play like that, we can win a lot of football Absolutely. games. Absolutely. You know, but, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you don't see on paper necessarily here in the second half, too. I mean, uh, you know, Pipkin threw a 65-yard touchdown pass that got called back. Sure. Again, that right there, you know, now we got 24 points, and they're, mm-hmm. they're, that's before they're going to their last drive to get their last Well, that gets you within two scores. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, defensively right there, too, you know, we, we had uh, – you know, their last drive right there, you know, they, they made another big play, and um, we had fourth and two. We had a chance to stop them right there and, and just didn't. They, they bounced a cut back on mm-hmm. us. But, um, you know, it, it's, uh, again, baby steps, you know, I know. And uh, trust me, I'm, I'm tired of taking them. I want to run. <laughs> Absolutely. But I, I'm very pleased with the way we played in the second half. Uh, the kids went out there and fought their hearts out, and that's something we're going to build on this week right, right here. So Well, as you said, Antonio Pipkin through the air was – 24 of 31 for 236 yards, a couple touchdowns. He was sacked six times in the ball game. Yeah, and, and you know, three of those are on him. Yeah, you know, with, without a doubt. Um, you know, he he a flash comes by him, he looked to take off right there, and that's when we tried to calm him down. And, and he actually was pretty calm all game. He was pretty excited and fired up. Yeah. But you know, I tried to calm him down in the pocket. You know, hey, Anton, look, just step up in the pocket right here. Don't you don't have to necessarily take off. Mm-hmm. If you step up, you've got. H open right there, Tyler Jones, or, or you've you got this guy sitting over here on the comeback. And he saw that on film today, and he told me, oh, coach, you're right. You know, I, I missed a lot of throws. But with that being said, as the backup quarterback who doesn't get a whole lot of reps all week, if you look at his completion percentage, he was 77 percent completion and that's really really good for the number of times he threw the football yeah absolutely you know so uh he's got a chance to be dangerous Mm -hmm. he really does and and the kid can handle it um he's not cocky at all but he's got swagger he's got confidence well you have to Um, without a doubt in that (laughs) position absolutely and um you know he's also going to be i I think i don't know where we're playing him at small forward or whatnot on the basketball team he's going to play basketball coach Priscilla. yeah Yeah. so um and that's why he came here he knew that um he had a chance to play two sports here and have fun and and i told him you got a chance to come in and compete for the starting job in camp he had two other d1 offers that told him hey if you come in we're going to redshirt you and you know that kind of turned him off he wanted to play right away absolutely you know you you could see why (laughs) yeah well he ended up being our leading ball care uh, ground gainer as well with 88 yards Jerry Brown from the tailback position uh, got the majority of the carries. James Hall got worked back into this week uh, yeah. this week as well. But if you take Brown, uh, his 33 yards rushing, and if there's 82 yards receiving, he had over 110 yards of total offense for you. Yeah, yeah, no, Jerry had a great game. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think, I didn't feel like he backed down one bit. I don't think he was big eyed. Actually, uh, before the game, before the kickoff, 
you know, uh, Jalen Santoro, Tyler Irwin made the comment that, hey, this is just like the state championship game. Yeah. You know, and, mm-hmm. and I, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, you're kind of right. Actually, there's, there was more at the state championship game. Probably, yes. Uh, you know, but it kind of gets back to recruiting more and more of those kids from winning programs. You know, obviously they expect to win, but they've played in environments like that. Uh-huh. And you, know, you you can count on every time you go to play Grand Valley, it's going to be that same type of environment. Absolutely. So. It was, uh, it was a, it's a fun place to call a game. I'm sure it's a fun place to play a game as well. And we'll get them one of these times. But, you know, they're – 91 and 10 in their last 101 regular season ball games. So if that tells you the type of program we're going up against, you know, yeah, we're we're, we're going to get there. Uh, I'm very confident. You know, again, you look you look out there uh, on offense. We started two sophomore tackles. Uh, Tony Shedd, a freshman, a redshirt freshman, he's still a freshman. Mm-hmm. Pipkin, a freshman. yeah, your backfield for the whole second half Harry is freshman, Brown, a freshman. Yeah. So you know, hey, those guys can play, and I expect to win. Um, but you know what? Boy, wait, wait till those guys are a little bit older, mm-hmm. you know. And um, you know, uh, Jaden Santoro is going to be a good player. The defense is no different. You look at yeah. their defense. You got Terry Harper, true mm-hmm. freshman. You know, you got Bill McKegg, who's a sophomore player. And you look got at some the young kids in backfield. And, sophomores, you have some you know? other young kids that worked in uh, to the ba- defensive backfield as well in this ball game. Justin Hernstein. Yeah. You know, we moved Justin Hernstein to Sam Backer after we had the injury to Kyle Finch. And I tell you what, Hernstein is a tough kid now. Yeah. He stuck his nose in there. And, and is he a little a bigger than they list him? He's listed at 6'4", 190, I believe is what they list him at. He he's, looks bigger he's, he's just probably the pads. Not, he's probably not a lot heavier than that. He is every bit of 6'4". Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, you, you put 20, 30 pounds on him. you, you got a big-time player right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Outside linebacker. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot of good things coming out of Hernstein right there because he's very physical at the point of attack, and he yeah. doesn't shy away from He's anything. not afraid to get his nerves dirty, is he? No, not at all. So. <laughs> all right, well, let's uh, let's step aside and uh, take a break. Well, first, let's talk about Northwood because I know okay. we go br- our next two segments we're going to bring us of our student-athletes. Northwood got their first win last week. They're one and two now. They've lost one conference game. They lost to Walsh. I noticed I was looking at their three games coming in uh, before our, our program today. North was a team that traditionally likes to run the ball. Yeah. And the first two games, they were kind of pass yardage heavy. This last game, they were more run yardage heavy, and I figured, and they are on the winning side. So I think maybe they got back to what they like to do this past week. Well, they're still going to be spread. They're going to spread you out um, and run kind of that uh, speed option, uh, zone read stuff for their quarterback. They don't have the Shavers kid from a year ago. Um, their quarterback was a senior. He was really, really good, fast. We, yeah. we couldn't tackle him in a phone booth. Um, you know, so they got another quarterback playing position, but they got a transfer running back from Michigan State. Um, he's a good football player. He had five touchdowns last week. I think they rushed for 256 yards. So, you know, I, I'm sure they're going to run the football. We gave up way too much rushing uh, last week to Grand Valley and the week before to Michigan Tech. So, mm-hmm. you know, we got to stop the run. Uh, that, that's a, the number one uh, chore for defense this week is stop the run. I believe and, it's uh, homecoming up there for them this weekend it is as well. Homecoming. Yep. So, um, you know, our, our guys need to uh, go in there with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. It's kind of a slap in the face right there. And um, mm-hmm. uh, go up there and play hard. And in the locker room after the game at Grand Valley, um, you know, I made them all stop what they're doing, get their eyes on me. And, and I spoke to them a little bit about how hard they've worked, how far we've come. But it's time to start proving this and start showing people this. And, um, you know, I challenged them this week. I said, you know what, y'all have heard me preach this over and over again. Can we go a whole week with doing everything? everything right i mean pay attention to the smallest details mm-hmm. that means be to class early not on time that means to show up for weights early not on time show up for treatment early not on time i mean you name it all the little bitty things hold the door open for the lady who's going into the cafeteria you name yeah. it can we do all the little bitty things right this week and then be the most excited team to play and do that at practice we can't just turn the switch on saturday let's sure. do that all we can practice so i challenged the unity council and the entire team and i looked them all in the eye and asked them one by one and I asked him this. I said, hey, you know, you guys know things are different here. Y'all know it. Y'all can feel it. And if I'm wrong, come tell me. You're not going to be in trouble. If, if I'm misreading this football team, y'all tell me. And, um, you know, Mark Rogers, Stephon uh, Willis, Jeremy Armstrong, Bill McKay, Joe Collard, all of them. Coach, we know we're better. We know we're better. Mm-hmm. We're going to get this done. So. It's a, it's a little bit different feel. I know we started off the season 0-3, and, and, and people that look on uh, at the record or in the newspaper and see our stats and, and read the, the stories are probably, eh, you know, hey, it, it, it's same old Tiffin. I got it's news not. for you. It's, it's not the same old it's Tiffin. Not. It's really not. And um, we're, we're going to get this done and prove a lot of people wrong, and the kids are very, um, you know, they're very – Stubborn as far as we're going to get this done, Coach. We'll make sure this happens. And, yeah. uh, I want it for them. I want them to get the taste of the win. Oh, gosh, yes. Because, hey, the, the – 
two ranked teams are off our schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody's going to lay down for us. It's not going to be easy. It's going to mm -hmm. be a dog fight from here on out, but we're very capable of doing that. And, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how this week goes. I'm excited to get out there and coach them. And uh, uh, today's practice was great. They're pretty upbeat and excited because they know. Yeah, it's a noon kickoff this coming Saturday up at Northwood University, and hopefully the weather situation is a little better this year compared to last year. If you remember, we had to leave the field for our fans if you were at the game last year. Hailstorm came in during the game and covered the entire field at Frost County Stadium white, and the teams had to actually exit the field. Well, I made the comment to the uh, the grounds guy there at, at the stadium. Walt. I said, wow. Yeah, Walt. I said, yeah, Walt, you know, I, I guess this is my uh, first taste of snow in September here in Ohio. Yeah. Because coach i've never seen weather like this before uh -huh. never <laughs> yeah it was a crazy sky and all of a sudden the hail came in but uh the field was solid white remember yeah it was hail. yeah i have a picture at home on my computer <laughs> from taking them from the press box but uh we see one of our student athletes jeremy armstrong is going to join us and stefan willis two dragons jeremy looks like he rode a skateboard over to us today so He's we'll in talk trouble to, for that uh, uh we'll talk to him <laughs> in a minute you are watching and listening to the gary goff show on the tiffany university dragon radio network Welcome back to the Gary Goff Show here on the Tiffany University Dragon Radio Network. And hello again to our viewers on our YouTube channel as well. Coach, now's the type of the program where we invite a couple of your student athletes in and introduce them to our listeners and our fans. We'll want you to introduce your young student athlete to your left. Yeah, we got uh, Jeremy Armstrong here. He's one of our receivers. He's from uh, Kitten Ridge High School. Uh, caught a lot of footballs for us last year as a true freshman and is on pace to do that again this year. So, uh, Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So, Jeremy, tell us a little bit about uh, you've played at Kent Ridge High School yeah. and how you ended up uh, signing on and becoming a Tiffany University Dragon. Well, it actually started um, my senior year. It was on my birthday, actually. I got a call from Coach Campbell saying that they checked out my highlight tape and that they were really interested. And I came up here and took a visit and liked everything I saw. The rest is history, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk Campbell was our receivers coach then. Um, he's since moved on to Austin Bryce as the offense coordinator. But um, I tell you what, the thing we liked about Armstrong's uh, – the film is kind of like the other guys we talked about. He pretty much did a little bit of everything. I, I think he played tailback probably more than he did receiver yeah, my senior in high school. Uh, a little bit of wildcat, if I remember, a little bit of everything. But um, he was a guy that was everywhere on the field, and he was a very strong runner and had good hands out of the backfield. So we we knew we could uh, you know convert him to a slot receiver for us. And didn't you guys score a ton of points when you were in high school as well? Uh, I think it got turned around like my junior and senior year. We kind of started off slow my freshman and sophomore year. And with some of the guys we had, we had a pretty good turnout my junior and senior year. So, yeah. So here's uh, Tiffany University playing wide receiver. Uh, last year you had uh, 39 catches for just under 500 yards and uh, three touchdowns, a career-high game with 11 receptions against Lake Erie. So talk a little bit about that transition you made from the high school game to playing as a fre true freshman here at Tiffany University. I think the biggest thing is just the speed the speed of everything we heard that last week didn't yeah. we coach yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, just the speed of everything is just i would i was kind of relating it to the practices here are kind of like the game speed of a high school game and it just gets even faster than that when you're playing in the college game so just the speed is a huge transition well and, and that's <clears throat> that happens to almost all the freshmen is uh you know <laughs> talking to them about hey when you get here it's just football you know <laughs> so don't be so big guy but it's it's gonna because we practice at a, at a, a big fast-paced tempo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um you know I, uh, if we're being honest we probably talked to jeremy a lot about hey you gotta you gotta go faster you yeah. gotta go harder and no different than any true freshman to be honest with you but um yeah it, that's a big culture shock for a lot of freshmen as they, they their first college experience and i'm sure the size of the defensive backs you're oh, seeing yeah. now are a little bit, di bit different than what you saw in high school as Some well safety 6'3 220 <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
huge. Well, we knew we had a player in uh, Jeremy. Um, it was a camp last year, and I think we threw him a fade to the back of the end zone, and and he outleaped everybody and went up and made the catch. And um, you know, we've always mm. joked about him having a 40-inch vertical. And, <laughs> you know, it, it, nobody really does. But, you know, Coach Eisen being the strength coach, he helped recruit him. So Coach Eisen's like, oh, yeah, he can jump out of the chair. Look, <laughs> look at him. Look at him. <laughs> I remember I was at one of the practices uh, this year, and I uh, passed down the middle, wasn't complete, and I hear Coach, that's on you, Armstrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we, I hear that. <laughs> we're brutally honest around here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you were a three-time all-conference player in high school and uh, playing here for the Dragons. Talk a little bit about some of the other uh, wide receivers that you guys are playing with. you got a pretty talented group out there. Yeah, we have a really uh, good core of receivers, and the, the good thing is I don't think anybody's going to be graduating, so we're all going to be here again next year. And, I mean, I think it's going to be great. we got a lot of talent out there, the receiver spots. You know, he's on pace. Uh, I just saw last uh, la- after last game, Marcus Burum – is was it sixth all time? Yeah, I believe five, fifth or sixth. Yeah, fifth or sixth all time leading receiver, um, and he's only played two seasons for us. I think he's got 111 or 12 receptions now. Mm-hmm. Well, Armstrong's got a chance to to blow that out of out of the water because. He caught 39 balls as a freshman. Yeah. You know, but Armstrong's have to look over his shoulder because of Tony Shedd, make sure yeah. he don't get uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's, 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 a, that's a good problem to have, isn't it, Coach? Exactly. Yeah. So we were talking about, uh, before you came on, too, uh, Jeremy, about all the youth that you guys have in your in all the skill position on the offensive side of the ball. It's got to be pretty exciting, though, that you got another rest of this year and two more years to play with just about everybody that's back there. Exactly. I mean, I think it's going to be awesome. And right now, we're. We're a little long, a little young, like we've been talking about. But I think my junior year, senior year, we should be really, really good. Yeah, we're, they're they're all very, very capable <clears throat> of mm-hmm. being really good players, and um, you know we'll see that this season. You know, mm-hmm. we still got a lot of football left. Yeah. yeah so, what are you studying here at Tiffany University? Uh, marketing. Marketing. Yep, marketing. What's your plans after school? Um, don't know yet. <laughs> don't know yet. <laughs> Try and make it to the league. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, and he's he's got the ability. You know, um, he's definitely got the God-given talent. You know, those guys that make it to the next level, it's about how much hard work they yeah. put in. That, that's, mm-hmm. that's always the difference right mm-hmm. there. But, Absolutely. Um, Jeremy's a hard work. I'm sure he can be successful in whatever he puts his mind to. So talk a little bit about uh, what you think is the strongest thing you bring as far as your skill sets are concerned to the Tiff University offense. Um, I think just – Maybe getting yards after the catch. I know my average has, has went down a little bit with this past game, but I think I'm more of like a possession receiver, so if I get the ball, I can I can get some yards after the catch. I know some of the other receivers we had talked to, I think last year, Coach, when we talked about the recruiting process that I'm coming here, when you talked about the term air raid for your offense, that always is something to appeal to the receivers. Is that what it was oh, with you oh, as yeah, well? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was, it was a dream with me wanting to be a receiver at the college level and then coming here and going four and five wide almost every single play. Well, nobody wants to stock block. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody but, uh, wants to play basketball on grass. You know? Yeah, absolutely. But you better be able to block if you want to be on the field. Yeah, right? I said that. Now he's going to use that against me tomorrow at practice. Uh-huh. Coach, you just said nobody wants so to, I had to qualify. That's so why I had to qualify that for you, Coach. Yeah. I know how this. I know how the kids work. So, you know, you're uh, one of your uh, defensive backs, uh, Stephon Willis, is going to join us here in a little bit as well. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be able to work against a talented group that's back there and practice to get you ready for the game days. It's, it's unreal, honestly. I mean, going up one-on-ones against Willis is just – he prepares me for any safety I'm going to face in this league. I mean, honestly. He can cover some ground, can yeah. he? Yeah, he's fast. <laughs> well, it's important to be able to have some, you know, some good quality you know, competition on the practice field to get you ready for the game day. Because as you've seen so far in this early going, as Coach and I were talking earlier, schedule makers didn't do you guys any favors with your first two games in the Gliac Conference mm-hmm. with, with Tech and Grand Valley out of the way now. Now you're going up to Northwood, a team that came down here last year. And a game that was – we had – we had right there in our hands until the yeah. weather kind of made a mess of things. But looking uh, to go up there uh, this weekend and uh, get that first W. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think we got a good game plan for this weekend, and I think we're, we're ready to get this first W. So, uh, Jeremy, uh, you're, uh, I believe it's uh, your parents that were sitting there with you at the live program we had at the Pioneer Mill that I had a chance to say hello to. Um, was it this year or last this year? year? No, this year. No, this year I was with the Rinkers. Oh, okay. I remember you were sitting there with somebody yeah, I had a chance to say hello to. They're, they're yeah, from they the same are. high school. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, so a lot of the kids we talk to, Coach, you know, a lot of it is is that their family does like to travel with the team yeah. and, you know, mm-hmm. not only the home games, but we had a decent uh, following up there at Grand Valley this week well, as well. Your, your father yeah, was there this yeah. weekend yeah. at the Grand My Valley. Dad came up. Yeah. You know, an uh, interesting thing about uh, Jeremy here, his older brother, is in the Air Force? Yeah, he's in the Air Force. And how big is he? Like 6'6", six, six, almost 6'7". Six, oh, wow. Yeah, he yeah. towers. He towers Jeremy. So, <laughs> yeah, Jeremy still might grow. We don't know. <laughs> but, oh, uh, yeah. No. But I remember there for uh, I was there for uh, his home visit, and I remember seeing the picture. I was like, who's that? He goes, that's my brother. I was like, how is he that tall in the Air Force? He can't fly. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> See one of those guys that shot up after high school? No, he actually shot up. I think it was like his sophomore year. Yeah, and I just... 
I don't know where he got the height from because both my parents are like 5'10". So. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm 6'5", yeah. and my dad's 5'9", and my really? mom's like 5'2", so yeah. I don't know where it comes from. My Mailman, I guess. Chance. My son's got Your a son chance. My son has a chance. <laughs> well, Jeremy, uh, anything else you'd like to add? Coach, you got anything else for Jeremy before we uh, let him get back on his skateboard? I'm confiscating the skateboard. <laughs> Carry it home. need to be on that. Oh. But, uh, no, you know, we're, we're very excited to have him. Uh, the the future is very bright for this young man. Uh, he makes a lot of big plays mm-hmm. for us. Um, you know, me and Coach East, both being former receivers in this offense, you know, we're, we're hard on the receivers. We don't let them get away with anything. And um, we expect them, you know, not to make the routine plays. That, that's expected. We expect them to make the big-time plays. Sure. You know, and um, one of the first things I said to him this weekend was, you got to come down with that football. I don't care if there's two DBs on you. You know, mm-hmm. he said, I know, Coach. But we expect that of these guys, and, and, and they're very capable of doing that, and, and we're going to start seeing more and more of that stuff. I'm sure Coach East can be pretty tough on you out there on the practice oh, yeah. field as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. I'll give you our fam- your family our best, and hopefully we'll get to see them at one of the ball games uh, here real soon. And continue success, man. It's a lot of fun to watch you play football, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's uh, Jeremy Armstrong, sophomore wide receiver on the Tiffany University Dragons. And let's talk to one of your defensive players after this break, Coach. Sounds good. Stefan Willis coming up next. You're listening and watching the Gary Goff Show on the Tiffany University Dragon Radio Network. segment of the Gary Goff Show for this week here on the Tiffany University Dragon Radio Network. Coach, uh, we've had a chance to talk to an offensive player, sophomore Jeremy Armstrong. Let's talk to a defensive player now. Introduce this young student athlete. Yeah, definitely. You know, I couldn't just have a receiver on and not a DB. I'd never heard of the end of it from the DB. Yeah, no doubt. They, they always talk. Equal time. Yeah, they always talk noise at practice uh-huh. to me. But, um, no, we, we got Stephon Willis. Um, he's from uh, Akron Firestone. He was a great football player up there. He, he uh, I guess the middle of the season last year, he started uh, – become a starter for us mm-hmm. at free safety and i tell you what he took the, the opportunity and ran with it made a lot of big time plays as a true freshman and this is the start of season of his sophomore year and he's made some good plays for us and we expect a lot of big things from him so stefan thanks for joining us here on the program it's a pleasure having you thanks for having me well you talked about when stefan came on the field last year as a freshman my broadcast partner matt and i talked about we felt that he was a difference maker right. when he got on the field last year our defense looked totally different, looked more athletic, looked a lot quicker when you got out on the field last year. So it's been a pleasure watching you play, Stefan. You really have been a difference maker on this defense. Well, I'll tell you what happened. We had a senior there that was an honorable mention all-conference player. Mm-hmm. He got hurt. Yeah. And uh, Willis was thrown into the action. And, boy, I, I tell you what, he, he took the job and ran and um, hadn't looked back since. So it was a lot of fun to, to see a safety that could get from hash to hash in, in the bat of an eye, you know. Well, we talked to Jeremy, and we let him say some nice things about you. So we'll let you say a couple <laughs> nice things about the receivers. We'll get that out of the way, and then we can talk more, more defense. So talk a little bit about uh, t- there's a talented group of wide receivers on this ball club. And they really got to make you work and practice. That's going to make you better come game day. Um, yeah, we have a lot of – variety around here it's got speed you got people who can just out jump you outrun you everything so being going to get against Jeremy Armstrong is like really good because it's like you're not gonna see too many six four six five receivers out there who can jump and run past you at any moment so it's like this is game this is game rough right here so and you feel like it's your responsibility to get those guys ready to face the tough defensive backs they're gonna see in conference play yes it is key that we have a look on both sides of the ball absolutely game looks on both sides. So you played at Akron Firestone High School? Yes, sir. Some good high school football up in that area of the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he did it all there, too. And uh, I just made the comment earlier about watching his uh, recruiting film. We had to watch it over and over and over again. And uh, he played his entire season with the club. Mm. And he was returning punts. He was picking off passes. He was playing receiver. You name it, he was still doing it with the club because he, he broke his uh, hand. Yes. Broke his hand during his senior year. But um, 
uh, the young man was was a great high school football player, and he's been a great player for us. So, so did the coach recruit you originally as a defensive player, or was he looking at you as an offensive player as well? And when you came out of high school, what were you thinking about playing? Uh, I was recruited as a cornerback at first. Um, so I actually, when I got recruited from Coach Campbell, they called me after a basketball game, told me he had good news. He was like, we're going to recruit you. We want you to be here. So we're going to offer you. So I got excited, but he said cornerback at first. So I was like, ah, all right. <laughs> I said, okay. I, um, I never played cornerback, like, really in high school. So when I came in, I said, okay, I'll do whatever I can to get on the field. Sure. Whatever you need, I'm there. But when I came here, I definitely felt like safety is where I needed to be. Do you, why, do you, why do you think they wanted to put you at cornerback? Because they just wanted to – because – Take, take those best athletes out of the – Well, yeah. You know, uh, recruiting high school corners is, is difficult, to be honest. I'm sure. Um, you know, because some of the film is so tight, you don't get to see the guys flip their hips and run. Um, and, you know, high school, where are they going to put some of their best players? Quarterback, tailback. Sure. Uh, maybe safety so they can get off the hash. Cover a lot of ground. Yeah, so it's, it's hard to see uh, corners. But we saw him on film playing everything. We saw him flipping his hips and running. So we knew that, you know, he, he could probably play corner. But – you know, last year, you know, we had a little bit more depth at corner, and we were a little thin at safety, and, you know, so we started him off there, and um, it, it was a perfect fit. And you're part of the special teams, too, at the uh, return game, which has been very effective for the Dragons. That's going to be a lot of fun to be a part of that because even when you don't have the ball, you can see those, the coverage guys looking around trying to figure out where that ball's at. <laughs> well, we're, we're eighth in the country as far as kickoff return right now. I want to be top five. Sure. And I thought Stefan had it last weekend because he broke one of the sidelines. I was like, there it goes. But it, not quite. You yeah. know, but uh, now we're, he's doing a good job on that unit. What would be more exciting to you, a kickoff return for six or a pick six? Kick return for six. Kick return for six? I live for special teams. Oh. Well, you got to love that, though, don't you? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. I was about to say, I don't care. I'll take any yeah. six. I'm excited about any six. Six, six. <laughs> Give us all of them. Give us you all know, of but, them. Um, what, what game was it last year where you picked off the ball, went about 70 yards? Lake Erie. Was it Lake Erie? Lake yeah. Erie. Yeah. And, 84 uh, yards. You know, I, I tell you what about, about Stefan, and it's probably his offensive uh, skills that have helped him you know, do this, but he's got great vision. You know, he's got great vision, and you know, that's why we got him back there returning kicks because he, he can see the cuts before they're there. And when you saw him pick that ball off last year and take it 70-something yards, I mean, he had about eight or nine cutbacks. You mm-hmm. know, and um, he's, he's got really good vision, and he's got good ball skills. So, And talk a little bit about some of your other defensive backs uh, with you there in the backfield. you got some talented group back there. Yeah, we're like a group of brothers back there. It's, a, it's nice having chemistry with everybody on the field. So working with other DBs is – up to our talent and we all click together our chemistry is there so it's just like a family back there i got you i got your back you got my back so it's good having a group of like depth we have two three three deep at every position back there so it's good yeah it's a good group there uh they, they, they got confidence you know they, mm-hmm. got, they got swagger back there which you better have oh yeah when you're put on the island if you get beat everybody in the stand sees that oh that was number uh-huh. two right yeah, there yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely well we don't tell antonio that you said number two <laughs> well, I, didn't, I just didn't want to say 26 <laughs> i know i know i know i know well, we talked to Jeremy. We talked about the biggest difference moving up from high school to college was the speed of the of the the players and and the size as well. Was that the biggest adjustment you had to make too? Yes, size, size, size. size the big receivers. Speed, yes, the the stature of some of these athletes in college ball is just crazy. Yeah, like, massive guys just everywhere. Two thirty, two forty at running back, quarterbacks two twenty five, and me. I came in as a real, real, real small guy, but. <laughs> <laughs> One summer with Coach Eisen, and I got some bulk on me, so I'm a little more confident about it. Well, it's, it's just, uh, you know, to play college sports, period, uh, not to mention just college football, but play college sports, period, I mean, you got to have a really good weight program, mm-hmm. you know, and um, you, you see freshmen come in, and by the time they're juniors, seniors, their body has just changed dramatically. So, yeah. um, you know, Stefan's going to get bigger and bigger every year, and, and I love Coach Eisen to death. He does a great job there in the, in the weight program, so... You know, we only wanted him at about 2.30 safe to be great. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> he's got a ways to go for that. Nah, uh, he's fine where he is as long as he keeps making plays for us. <laughs> what are you studying here in school, Stefan? Um, sports management. Sports management. You're a sophomore here at Tiffany University? Yes, sir. Any plans after graduation? 
Undecided right now. Undecided. Just ready to Enjoying your college time step. while you have it. There you go. I hear you, man. Play I hear ball you. as long as you can. Yes, sir. Well, you talked about Coach Eisen and the work he does with the uh, with the kids in the uh, in the weight room. Wasn't he about seventy pounds bigger when he played linebacker in the Arena League for a little while? When we talking about that yeah, with him last I, year? I, I, uh, who knows with Coach Eisen? But yeah, there's, there's yeah. pictures of him. There's pictures of him and Coach Durr when they played linebacker. Both of them look totally different people. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I mean? So and then we saw the pictures that you put up uh, when you were at Valdosta State, and you looked like you were 14 years old <laughs> back then too, Coach. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Stefan, if Coach doesn't have anything else for you, man, we'll uh, let you off the hot seat. But thank you so much for joining us here and taking time for being part of the Coach Gary Golf Program. And best of luck this Saturday at Northwood and the rest of your career at Tiffany University. It's a pleasure watching you be a Dragon, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Coach, anything else today? Uh, we got the big game at Northwood coming up this weekend. Another tough GLIAC test, as each and every one is. The uh, rest of the way out besides our one uh, non-conference game and dropped here in the middle of October. But it doesn't get any easier. It's just GLIAC no. tough, GLIAC tough. No, it doesn't. Um, but I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, um, you know, I think our guys are going to play hard from here on out. Um, I feel like we're we're bonding uh, as a team more and more um, every day, every week. So uh, the guys know that we need to go up there and take care of business, and, and we need to get this win. Yeah. And uh, we're going to work hard this week to prepare ourselves for that. So it um, should be a, gr a great atmosphere. It's their homecoming. Uh, we need to go up there and, uh, you know, take that away from them. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a 12 noon kick at Northwood. Our pregame show start at 11.30 on Coast 100.9 and Coast1009.com. You can listen online, and you can get the Radio Loyalty app as well and listen to the games each and every Saturday on your phone or your tablet device, whatever uh, is easiest and most convenient for you. Let's thank our title sponsors for bringing you this program. Those title sponsors include CF Professionals Incorporated, Gary Gruss's office, and the Ohio Mutual Insurance Group, Jim Kennedy's office. Our other sponsors include Marco's Pizza, the Pioneer Mill Restaurant of Tiffin, Ralph's Joy of Living in Tiffany and in Fremont, Seneca Hills Golf Club, State Farm Insurance at Lape's Office, Steyer Seeds, Tiffany's Hardware, and Viewpoint Graphics. So, Coach, thank you again. Another show in the books. Let's do it again next week. Let's go get them. All right. Go Tiffin Dragons. More information on Tiffin University Athletics at GoTiffinDragons.com. More information on Tiffin University at Tiffin.edu. Have a great week. Get them Dragons this Saturday, 12 noon kickoff. Catch you next week on the Gary Golf Show here on the Tiffin University Dragon Radio Network.